uh, assign the task to introduce Grameen database to you. Uh, I'll use the mixed approach of uh, introducing the database to you, how to use it, but I will show you some data that we have produced in our lab and how we have managed to use Grameen to get up to certain uh, and ask some biological questions out of it. What a biologist, what a molecular biologist, a biochemist, or a breeder, or uh, even a molecular geneticist can get out of Grameen uh, in that sense. There is something for computational biologists as well, some things for statisticians as well. So it's, it's kind of providing you a wholesome approach for access and uh, finding and doing the analysis for your data sets uh, on Grameen. So it's a community resource. It's completely free. Uh, the whole database is accessible online free as well as for download. So you can install your own local versions if you have good machines working for you. Otherwise, I've tested it here in the wireless in this room as well as in this campus. Uh, it has worked perfectly fine for us. And so you can have your massive amounts of data and you can still load it onto Grameen. Right? So I'll start with my last slide first so then I'm done with my presentation. Uh, okay, so the funding comes from National Science Foundation of the U.S., uh, some startup funds from Oregon State University and USDA ARS, but majority of the data that we get is from public uh, uh, repositories, and you are all the authors of that data set. So it's not my data, it's your data. What we do is we bring all your data on the database, uh, do a good quality annotation on top of an existing data sets, and then return it back and provide it back to you. So that is a Grameen commitment, that it's your data, you have access to your data uh, on its sides. So the work I will be presenting today would be uh, mainly by Sam Fox and Abigail Sage. Abigail is an undergrad, Sam is a pro stock, and Sushma, Palita, Vidya, and Justin Priest, they're working on uh, providing the plant reactome work, uh, and there's a big collaboration in the new grant that is funded for next five years. is by European Bioinformatics Institute's Paul Kersey. He runs Plant Ensemble. Helen Parkinson runs the Atlas Gene Expression Datasets. Linkenstein runs the, plant, uh, the human reactome, but we are using it as a portal to develop a plant reactome. And then uh, there is a big new collaboration with uh, Crispin Taylor from uh, American Society for Plant Biology. So the publications, as soon as you publish the data, now we will be asking you for the data sets as well. So that is a new public new approach that's going to be coming in. Okay. So Grameen is a comparative genomics portal, as I said. Uh, you, you can go to www.grameen.org and have access to this front page. You can go and uh, hover your mouse on search to get uh, all the data sets that you want to search, like. Otherwise, these are quick icons that are available, like genomes, genetic diversity, pathways, proteins, genes, ontologies, genetic markers, computer, uh, comparative maps. A lot of classical work has gone into identifying QTLs and uh, classical genes in rice, for example. We have about 120 rice maps, genetic maps, and those are all aligned to the genome. So anything that is mapped on those genetic maps are also aligned to the gene to the genome. So that's a good way of transitioning from your genetics to genomics or going the other way around from genomics to genetics to find out the stuff. And this is Grameen Mart. It's your shopping cart. Uh, as you go to Amazon.com or anywhere else and you say, I like this product, I want to buy. So there's no buying here, but you can always put in shopping cart. So you run your own queries. I will say that you can search some things, but if you want to download the data, everybody's asking, can you get me a file? Download me a file. I say, no. You go there, you shop, your, write your own queries, and you would be able to get the large-scale data sets in the desired format. Okay, so I'll focus mainly on the uh, genomes, the pathways, and how to use them. Uh, so right now we have about 19 to 20 plant genomes uh, fully sequenced. Some of the ORISIS genomes that are coming from the OMAPS uh, project, uh, Rod, which Rod Wing was talking about yesterday, and he's talking in the parallel session next, somewhere around in this campus on this floor. Uh, four or five of those genomes are, these uh, four, five, six, five genomes are fully sequenced. Uh, those are available, and there are several of them which uh, with only uh, uh, short arm of the third chromosome. That data set is also available on Grameen. And all of these RISE genomes are, have been aligned to each other to give you a comparative view of uh, the aspects that you would do. But as the more and more uh, RISE genomes get completed, Grameen has a commitment with the IOMAP project 
to show uh, and provide it to you the resource on Grameen as well. So this is just 20 chromos 20 genomes. Uh, it can go to any number of chromosomes, uh, genomes that uh, you wish to have here. All of them have been aligned to each other, especially the monocots to monocots and dicots to dicots, right? So you can go from genome level view to the base pair level view uh, and across the genomes uh, to compare. So what are the key strengths that we have? Comparative genomics, so you have 19 to 20 genomes, whole genome alignments, phylogenetic trees of all gene trees. So all these 19 genomes, all the genes from these genomes are aligned and put together into gene phylogenetic trees. So you don't have to run your own uh, racks, MLs and everything. All of them have been pre-computed for you and you can get the trees, download the trees and alignments as well. Uh, all, and the genome anno gene annotations for each of them. There is extensive amount of variation data sets coming from ORISA SNP project as well as any other projects that have been published. Uh, we are working with the Susan McCooches and the other, the new uh, RICE diversity projects that are there. Uh, those data sets would be coming in as soon as the publications are, uh, are done on that side. Uh, but it also allows you to load your data on it and I'll tell you more about it. Uh, there is integration with the pathways, so you can move from genes to the pathways and what kind of functions they do. And uh, as I said, ability to upload and analyze and share your data. So your data, you can come, bring, uh, upload it onto Grameen, analyze and leave or stay with you. We will never see that data and nobody else would ever see that data on, uh, in around the world unless you say that you sh now I'm ready to share that data with you. So it won't say. Uh, and we will, if you are willing to share, then we will ask you to present the data in the standard format. Then there is data mining, as, it, as I told you about Grameen Mart. Do your own uh, genomics shopping, shopping card for you. So here's the browser view. You have the genome browser view, which has the context. Then you have the genes on the plus and the minus side. G, it's different from the G-Browse that you see generally, where you would see uh, all the genes with the direction arrow pointing arrow towards which is which one is a minus or a plus. This is a little different. This is the ensemble genome browser. Uh, it gives plus and minus strands uh, mappings uh, separately. And uh, this is uh, the genetic markers, uh, the SSRs or RFLP markers that have been mapped onto the genome if they are sequenced. We also have QTLs mapped on the genome, and I'll talk to you a little bit about it. Uh, the variations or the SNP data sets and indels and insertions that are coming being identified by Arise SNP project, uh, that those are all integrated, plus anything that was done, by about three or four million SNPs uh, identified between B9311 and Nippon-Bari by the BGI, those are also there. And the new SNP project, SNPs coming in from these projects that you just heard today and yesterday, uh, those would be available as well on the Grameen. Then again, I told you about every genome has, rice genome has been compared against each other. So you have, for example, all these genomes aligned to each other, and you want to see, let's say, for example, Brachiantha, how does it compare to Nippon Bari, or Japonica genome? You can click on that region and see the view. So you would be able to see the synteny that is happening between the two genomes. So the top one is Sativa, Japonica genome, and the bottom one is uh, chromosome one from, oh, sorry, it's from Glabarima. So you would see that there are certain regions that are not very nicely mapped into the, each other. So, so you can actually browse and vary and try to find out the variations between the genomes as well uh, if you want to compare uh, in this thing. So that's the genome browser. And I'll give you an example of how to use the genome browser. And uh, the example I would use is the response to SALT. Uh, it's a gene expression data set analysis that uh, has just started, the data has just started coming in from my lab. Uh, it's a massive amount of data, uh, which we have. And the, the idea is to find, identify the key sets of genes that are potentially conferring SALT tolerance to, in rice. Uh, and uh, look at their differential gene expression. And can we use Grameen to uh, do some analysis on it? So the two varieties, the genotypes that we used was Pokali and IR29. They were all subjected to very high salt, to about 300 millimolar salt uh, NACL. And after, t uh, one hour after treatment, uh, post two hours post dawn, then they were co started collecting samples of 1, 2, 5, 10, and 24. What we will, I will present you the data from 1, 5, and 24 day, uh, hour uh, treatment, and these are to look for early response versus late response uh, genes. Although 24 hours is not that late, I guess so. Uh, these are all two week old plants. So the idea is to isolate the RNA and conduct the RNA seq analysis. 
the reason what we are trying to do is trying to shot three birds in some single way is instead of the genomes uh, what we say uh, I don't want to use the genomes I want to look at the genes that are expressed under these conditions uh, can I find the novel context or novel genes that are identified in these genomes that are not available in the reference indica or japonica genomes and can I use the transcriptome data set to identify the SNPs uh, that can be aligned to the genome so those are the three things majority of the things that we started with I'm not a breeder I'm not a geneticist but I can generate the tools that I I'm more interested in and then I can go back and collaborate with the users uh, around the world so these were the three, two, uh, three aspects. So we got about uh, more than 500 million reads from IR29 and Pokali separately, pulled them all together and started running the RNA-seq analysis uh, to build the transcriptomes. So we got about 59,000 contacts, for example, in IR29 and another 54,000 in uh, Pokali, with about 13,000 uh, base pair longest contacts and average length was about 1.5 uh, kb. Uh, in that case, which is not very far off from what you have in the reference genomes uh, in general. To give you an idea, there is about, uh, uh, of those 59,000, about 58,000 got mapped so, uh, uh, to the gene models, not the genes. So about 75% of the genes are covered in this transcriptome. And what we find is about close to about between 3,000 to 3,500 genes, uh, contexts from these two genotypes, we were not able to map it into the reference genome. And those are probably the key we will be looking at what is happening in those uh, things that, that is not present in the reference genomes uh, in general. But between the Pokkali and IR29, all on, they match 97%, but still there is a 3% difference, and we want to see whether where we went. Either is something a fluke or something real in it uh, as well. So here's a quick analysis. We've moved from expression to SNPs. We use the, uh, the standardized uh, SNP uh, Perl scripts that we, had, we developed uh, together with Jeff Chang's lab in Oregon State uh, to find out SNPs from the transcriptome. Uh, so in comparison to Indica 9311 genome, wherever I say Indica, it's, uh, it's 9311. Uh, it's, uh, there are about 17,000 SNPs were common to both of them and about uh, 17,000 was. So this is IR29 is much closer to 19, uh, 9311 versus Pokali that we find at all. But compared to Japonica, which just goes two to three fold more, a number of uh, SNPs that you start identifying all those things. So now we have expression data sets, now we have the SNPs. Now what should I do with the, with, by using Grameen on that side? So here's a, take a look. I took the data files that I had and I uploaded it onto Grameen to see a get, I don't have to hire a bioinformatics person in my lab to do it. If I have the data in my, 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 my Excel file, I should be able to upload it onto Grameen. And that's what I did. I took a, a, the unique SNPs from uh, these two genomes. Uh, for example, these uh, 54,000 uh, unique SNPs and two different files uploaded onto Grameen and you were able to see the distribution of those SNPs on the karyotype view. And that's what you would be, and you would be able to identify, hey, uh, I'm getting a pretty good coverage about it. Same way you can upload your expression data sets as well and I'll show it to you. So how, what do we know about salt tolerance in rice? There is a salt one gene that was identified by classical studies uh, a long time back. Uh, it was mapped uh, in a population sativa versus longistaminata. And there's a genetic map uh, or which were identifying, uh, which were used to identify lots of QTLs. And uh, there are about uh, 70 to 80 uh, genetic maps that have around 10,000 uh, QTLs from rice mapped in the last decade or so. Those were all mapped on the individual genetic maps, but if the sequ underlying sequences were, uh, the markers were sequenced, they were all mapped, the, the, the QTLs were ported back onto the genome. So here I can say that SOL1, RG146B, uh, RFLP marker, and this genetic gene is co-localizes and very nicely tied with the salt sensitivity uh, QTL onto the gene that is mapped in the genome. And it also goes uh, with the internode length and panicle weight, and there are uh, lots of other QTLs that are overlying in that region. So what I did was, in my, I went to the Grameen, looked at the views, made the comparison of the, gene, uh, the two genetic maps, and then clicked on this QTL to show the region of this QTL on the genome, so that I can quickly go back, as a, uh, if I was a breeder, I would love to see what are the underlying genes and markers uh, that are available for me to start using in my breeding program. For example, uh, so that's what where comes the option. 
The other options are which we want to do is as I as I raised the question of our uh, web services and the data sets. So if you are running your own uh, databases and if you provide the web services, then uh, the user coming to Grameen can come to the genome and start querying your data set as well remotely. We don't have to host your data. We don't have to download your data. All the users have to do is just go and query, show me all the gene expression data sets that are coming from Arisa Express or, come, or show me all the interactions for my genes of interest under this QTL region from your, uh, oh, what was that, friend? Uh, the the co-expression network uh, analysis. So those can be queried remotely for that purpose, and that would be an integrated resource that um, Blake was talking about yesterday uh, in that sense. So Grameen is already ready for that aspect uh, in some ways. And uh, you can d upload your files, you can query the remote data uh, from Grameen, and if you have websites running which you have, for example, if you provide the downloadable files, uh, you just have to type your URL and your data can be uploaded onto Grameen. But if you are uploading your data, you are the only one who is seeing it, not us. Okay. So upload your data. There are interfaces uh, somewhere on the genome pages. You, uh, in this blue section, you would see configure pages or manage your data. You would get a window like this. This is for I'm looking at the variant. So for example, if I identified the SNPs, uh, then I want to know what is the consequence of this SNP in respect to the gene and the genome. What is it doing? In w w If a change is happening, then the call is being made, then what is its contribution to the genome, whether it is changing amino acid or it's introducing a stop codon or it's introduce uh, where is it lying so you can actually use the SNPs load your updated uh, files in different formats or in a regular tab delimited format and say show me the consequences or the effect of the SNP uh, in my data set and that's what you would be able to do so you are analyzing your own data set you don't need a bioinformatics person to do it for you okay so this is what you would do and you would be provided with a table uh, which is downloadable in Excel and tab delimited format but once you click over here you would have a, a checkbox if you click on that uh, close this button and the all the data can be mapped back to the genome and you would be able to see it on the genome itself uh, once again the data is visible only to you so in this case for example I would say that synonymous non synonymous and in for one instance you would see that there is a stop codon was introduced uh, based on the SNP that we identified between Bokali and uh, thing so that gives you a clear-cut idea whether I should be uh, looking at these genes in my data sets uh, for that purpose or not right if your SNP matches an existing SNP already mapped on the genome it will also tell you that it is an overlapping gene uh, SNP you, once you open uh, configure tracks, you would be able to open uh, any of the tracks. It will say your data has nine tracks on it. For example, I uploaded all the expression data sets. Now you switch on all of them. Once you switch on, it would show you any number of tracks that you would have. Uh, there are more than 40 or 50 tracks that are uh, by default are available plus any additional of your tracks. And you have an option to view all those. So this is what you would look like. For example, if I click on the expression data sets, I, was, I loaded the twofold uh, expression data sets at every time point uh, compared between uh, the control and the treated sample. For example, and I was able to see this is the region of the genome that maps to the QTL that we were looking at. And you would be, I was able to see that some genes, for example, this one is up at 24, up at 5, up at uh, 1 hour, and this is in the IR29 aspect. But if you look at, uh, where is this? Uh, there, there is one more gene over here. You would say up, down, 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 up. So that's the case where you, you have a visual aspects of the genes, and if, we, if I can query the other databases that were presented in this week, uh, uh, in the talk before, talks before me, I should be able to do a remote call to confirm what I'm seeing is confirmatory or not, if that, is, that data is available uh, to me for confirmation purposes uh, in general, right? So in this case, for example, look at this gene. These are up, up, up all the time in uh, Pokali, but it's completely down in IR29. So that could be a potential aspect for me to look for, uh, is it contributing to the QTLs? And if I align the SNPs over here from my data sets, I would be able to see it. So here are the SNPs that are available from my data set. Uh, and, and these are the expression values as you would see on the Grameen. So you have control over your own data and you're analyzing your own data aspects. I can compare it with the existing SNPs that are available and uh, there was a gene next to this one. This, uh, this gene particularly was 
uh, is some kind of an odds and response factor, and it has uh, a stock codon. So if I go back and look at the details of the uh, details of the gene model, I can see where the SNPs are available from the publicly available data sets, and I can see that there are two genotypes that have stock codons is introduced based on the SNPs on it. So that is a good way of looking at the markers and develop asking the breeders to go back and take a look at the data sets for me. Plus, it is also advantages for the for the uh, for the other folks who want to do evolutionary or molecular biology studies as well. You, as I told you about the gene trees, this is the way you have it. This is the gene. I looked at the gene trees for this. This is the gene that I was interested in. I can see there are two paralogs of this gene in the genome. And there, this is uh, also available in Glaborema and Brachyanthia. And Brachypodium aligns pretty well in these clusters. But you have the c 4 ZMAs, Sorghum, and Citaria all clustered separately for their parallels. So you need, don't need to generate all the trees with you. You don't have to do the blast all the time. It's all done for you. Just go and grab the data. Do your biology more. That is more important than that uh, aspects for you. Do, you have, do I have more minutes or we done? Just wrap it up in one minute. Just wrap it up in one minute. One minute. So, and so if you, I'm closing it out on that side, but if you have any feedback and if you find wrong information or if you need any new features or if, you, if you're not able to work on something, so you can go to Grameen on this website and at the very end is a feedback. So just click on the feedback, it will give you an option and it will open up on any page on, your, on Grameen. So click on the feedback and then uh, it will give us a URL that we can track that you have the problem with this data set or you want to do work with that data sets. And as soon as we get it, we try to respond it within uh, 24 hours of a weekday uh, if it's available for you at that purpose. I didn't talk about the met metabolic pathways, but this is the metabolic pathways which you would see. You can upload the data sets or your expression data sets on the metabolic pathways to look for the pathways that are responsible for different uh, expression data sets. This is not a solid data, this is a diurnal data. Uh, I'm not going to talk much more about it, but you can actually up see the da expression data set on the pathways to see which of my paralogs or sub sub subunit genes are being expressed at what time. Uh, if you're interested, I can talk to you more about it. But that's it for me. Thanks. OK. Uh, one question? Or if, may, uh, if, I, if I may ask uh, Pankaj. I just want to get your, your idea on how a Grameen will play a role in the RISE uh, diversity database that uh, Blake was uh, talking about yesterday uh, using the, the, the Tayer platform. So how do you think would uh, so Grameen play a role in this initiative? Tear as if, if, you, rem if you remember looking at Blake's, uh, yeah. Blake's uh, slide, there was for comparative aspects, comparative mm -hmm. genomics across species and across genotypes, that's where Grameen plays, comes into picture. So it, we will be able to provide all the genome alignments and we will be able to provide all the gene trees uh, to drive the orthology data sets and plus any data sets that is being mapped. So Grameen has a collaboration with Plant Ensemble, which is, for example, right now uh, allows us to view 1,001 genomes from Arabidopsis that have been sequenced, so to find the haplotype maps and things like that. So Grameen is actively working with the Arabidopsis community on, on, on that side. And uh, as we move forward, uh, we will play the similar role for rice as well in some ways. Mm. Okay, thank you. Yep. So uh, we'll now proceed with the next speaker, and uh, our speaker needs no introduction, so... Uh